smaller than everybody else too when I started. Actually, they didn't have my age. When I wanted to go and start, they didn't have my age. So uh, I was playing with like two year older guys. So. Questions, I'll come back to it. Go ahead, Dial. Uh, Alan, you got something? Putting in is is it truly more complexity than last season, or is it just the same yeah, kind of complexity? Uh, actually, we didn't play much defense. We put one three one. We had two three zone and man to man. That was it. And we had point drop, which is, was match up zone. But this this year we have a uh, we have actually like a zone defense. The rotation come from different places, so uh, it's confusing to run your offense too. Is it more confusing for the perimeter guys or interior defenders or same? I mean, it's, it just when you're playing the, you know, when you're offensive end and uh, you're trying to score on two, three, you know where the rotation is going to come, so everybody will know the, where the defensive guy is coming. On this one, it's really weird. So I don't think it, you know people will pick it up right like right away because you know two threes or one three one two three one two two. Those are the things that we saw since I mean since I play basketball. I know what those are and how the rotations go on those. But with this, it's the first time I'm doing this. I never played any defense like this before. I'm not going to say what it is, really. <laughs> I mean, it is it is his own defense, though. <laughs> All right, back to a little background stuff. So, so, so you were clumsy. You weren't very big. When, mm -hmm. did, when did the coordination and the growth spurt start? Well, coordination started last year, I guess. <laughs> but the growth spurt, I think... I was like 13, 14 years old, and I started to like grow real fast. And I was playing a two guard since to that point. And then after that, I I didn't know any post moves, anything. And I came back after summer, and they're like, "Wow, you can't play two men anymore. <laughs> you gotta play in the post." And did I start to work on post? I sucked <laughs> really badly, but. Uh, I think I'm doing all right now in the post. <laughs> when did the idea to come to the United States hit? Obviously, you came over before college, so when, yeah. when did that start? And where did that start? Did you well, I never thought of coming here before. Mm -hmm. I never wanted to because I I didn't want to leave my family or, you know. Sure. And I had a good opportunity there to play, and I could have been... I could have been like, you know, how guys come from Europe, like Ricky, you know, all those guys start playing pro when they're like 16 years old. And um, when I was 16, we went to this tournament in Germany, and it was like a big deal. They make like every four years or three years. So Albert, Albert Schweitzer, that's the name of the tournament. And, uh, everybody comes there like there's like African teams Asian teams so it's like pretty much like a world mm -hmm. you know international oh, deal <laughs> right right and um, I was I was the first I was the what they call the uh, all, all Albert Sch no all Albert Schweitzer team I was okay. the center okay you know? and um, after that there was this Adidas Nations thing, and um, they called me for that. They're like, "You want to come play in the tournament?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure." Mm -hmm. It's in Dallas, and I've never been to America, so let's go see what sure. it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I went there, and people liked me. And then when I went back home, I started having these emails and calls from people that from high schools that wanted me to play for them. And, mm -hmm me a scholarship so I said you know what maybe I'll just go to high school and then go back after high school then I went to high school and then two two weeks later I had like college coaches coming in 
crazy stuff going on and I'm like oh this is pretty cool I'll, you know and uh, after that I was like well I'll just go to college and if it don't work out I'll go back <laughs> and then I came here and got suspended 20 games and that was a hard time I was, I was thinking about going back and everything and uh but I was like, you know, I'm just gonna wait and see what happens. And after that, sophomore year, junior year, and I'm like, well, I mean, there's two years left. Why am I leaving? <laughs> now there's like months left. <laughs> so there, <laughs> there's this is like the, the the American part of my career, I guess, because I always like was thinking about like, oh, if this don't work out, I'll just go back, you know. And it worked out, or I thought it worked out, and then. I was like, well, I'll wait another six months to see what happens, and it's, it's I'm here now. Four years, and right? Five years, right? How'd you pick Beckley? How'd you pick Mountain State? They were actually they were the only high school that would give me scholarship because I was really late. Mm -hmm. You know, I was late to picked up by any team. Everybody had their rosters already. You know, they give all the scholarships and everything. So I was the only guy that was out. And team needed me. They just they were playing like double A, single A kind of thing, mm -hmm. and then they became this like boarding private mm -hmm. kind. Of, I don't know what it is, but they're like, well, we need a, we need good players, and I think you can help us. And I was like, all right, fine. And then I went to Beckley. I, I believe me, I didn't pick Beckley. You know, like, oh yeah, I want to go to Beckley. I didn't even know what where it was. And um, after that, uh, you know, West Virginia came in, Coach Hoggs talked to me and everything, and I liked them. And I was like, well, I'll just go to college. And I never was into education like that. You know, I always, I always thought that I would be a pro when I was like 16, 17. So I never thought of education like that. But I was like, you know what, I have an opportunity now to go to college and play basketball at the same time so it's I think it'll help me in the future and I did that and my dad and everybody told me to too mm -hmm. so Dennis you, you giving Voldy any kind of advice on how to do yeah. this whole thing like well, actually like yesterday I talked to him I mean he's homesick right now and you get homesick when <laughs> stuff is going bad you know when everything is really good you don't really get homesick but um he got six games. It's not that big of a deal, man. You know, I had 20. And um, I told him, I'm like, look, I mean, whatever I say, it's not going to make you feel better or anything. But uh, believe me, everybody goes through this. I mean, we got Noreen coming from Minnesota. You know, it's far. It's not Ukraine, but it's still far, you know. And uh, they, they, not see, they don't see their family either. So, like, you just got to, you know, go with it and talk to us. And that helps a lot. And I was like, you know, I've been there, and any, any time you want to talk to me, you can talk to me. So, I mean, I'm trying to help him as much as I can from my experience that I had when I was a freshman. And it's really hard, but it's nothing that you can't, you know, get over. Are you, is the communication with him a little tough, or how's that going? Does he speak, uh, what language you guys talk in? Yeah, I mean, he, of course he has some funny problems with English but every I mean I had it too so uh, I can understand him and and he really doesn't like some guys get really shy and they don't talk you know after a while like they don't want to mess up so they don't talk he's not like that so it's fun to talk to him and everything I think he'll be fine are you the guy kind of taking him under the wing seeing as you're a European guy? right right I mean I I, I can relate his what, what what's going on with him better than anybody can so um, I think I can provide the best help um, out of anybody so I'm you know I'm trying my best I don't know how much I'm helping him how much he you know makes him feel better but I'm trying my best